bank and benefit from a lot of the uh, ways that a bank earns money. Yeah, um, I think another way to look at it is kind of like if you were at the bank and you were making all these service fees and interest and this and that from your clients, but we, we won't have any of the overhead of actually owning a bank. That's right. Um, another way to look at it would be, you know, a lot of real estate investors, when they buy a uh, property, they're not just buying it, hoping that it goes up in value in two years and selling it. We're buying it, we're sticking a renter in it, we're getting a mortgage, it's getting paid down. There's all these different wealth drivers with real estate, and that's similar to how we're taking advantage of yield farming in the decentralized finance space. Yeah, so I'm all in on blockchain. I really do believe this could be another stream of income for real estate investors. Now, I understand this could be confusing uh, for many of you who have no idea how you know the blockchain works. But Paul and I partnered up, we're creating the Whale Club in order to teach you guys how to navigate the blockchain and invest in the blockchain with less risk. That's right, and so what the Whale Club is, is it's a community of high net worth real estate investors looking to leverage blockchain to build what we call a business treasury. Um, we are going to teach you everything you need to know about the language of crypto. Uh, there's a lot of terms and phrases that everybody's uh, still getting used to. So we'll help you kind of understand that language. We help you understand how to navigate this as safely as possible and stay very safe and secure. We teach you um, the fundamentals of how to invest, strategies that you can execute on, and mostly we focus on things like behavior and decision-making skills, because as we know, crypto has very little to do with actual crypto and mostly to do with uh, your frameworks, your principles, and your behaviors. And managing your emotions. Exactly. So Paul, as a real estate investor, why would I care about the Whale Club? Well, what we teach in the Whale Club is how to build your own business treasury. As real estate investors, a lot of us uh, struggle with cash flow consistently over time. And uh, what the business treasury helps us do is provide cash flow to the business consistently. Um, and we help real estate investors set that up on the blockchain. If this sounds like something that might be of interest to you, go to blockchainwhales.com. And from there, we got a free guide on how to get started. And if you might be interested, you could also join us in the next cohort. Uh, now, I want you guys to know we are looking for high net worth real estate investors, right? That's the community we're creating. Uh, but again, if you're interested, go to blockchainwells.com or DM me the word yield farming. Many of you know that I've been investing in blockchain for the last six months. During my journey, I've had the chance to learn about yield farming from my good friend, Paul Sparks. Now, you're probably wondering what the heck is yield farming? So I'll let Paul explain. Yeah, so yield farming is using decentralized finance or DeFi to essentially lend money and earn interest on that money uh, from the exchange, lending it out and facilitating trade. The best way uh, I've been able to describe this is uh, using the analogy of like a train. Jump on the steam train. We real estate disrupt us. Hey everybody, thank you for joining us for today's episode of Real Estate Disruptors. Today we have our very first solo episode of Real Estate Disruptors. You guys know we always like to do interviews. This one's gonna be a little different because I was actually not planning on doing an episode at all uh, to celebrate the holidays, right? Taking time off to spend time with my family. But there's a lot of uncertainty out there right now. The market is a little tumultuous, a little interesting. So I thought, you know what? Let me just share with you guys what I'm doing with my business uh, to address the recession for the next six to 12 months. If this is your first time tuning in, I'm Steve Trang, sales trainer. Every month, we help hundreds of people buy more houses at deeper margins. If you want to join us on our training calls, DM me the word sales on Instagram, and I am on I am on a mission to create 100 millionaires. And really, the information on this podcast alone is enough for you to become a millionaire in the next five to seven years. If you will take consistent action, I promise you that you will become one. And today's show is brought to you by our investor company, InvestorLift. Get access to over 2 million cash buyers across the country. Go to InvestorLift.com, put in disruptors to get 10% off. And if you get value today, please tag it from below. Share this episode right now. That way we can all grow together. And this is a live show. 
So please ask your questions for me to answer. Now, here's the thing, right? I said this earlier. There's a lot of uncertainty out there right now, uh, and totally uh, understandably, right? And I'll kind of share a quick rundown as to how we got here. Uh, but, you know, I was at Collective Genius two weeks ago, and my good friend Gary Harper uh, shared from the stage. I thought this was a great line. You got to deal with reality, or reality is going to deal with you, right? Are you prepared for what's coming up, uh, what's up ahead? So uh, when we started this year, interest rates were at 3% you know, still near historic lows. Not as low as, as the uh, mid-twos we were in parts of last year, but 3%, that's really, really cheap money, right? If you're buying a house or you're doing a cash-out refi, you're doing birds, 3%, those are phenomenal numbers. But we started to see inflation kicking in. And our government had a decision to make. Do we want to address inflation or do we want to address a potential upcoming recession? And right now, at this exact moment, they're concerned about inflation. So what are they doing? Well, on June 1st, a little bit more than a month ago, the Federal, Federal Reserve says that they are going to stop buying mortgage-backed securities. And what that means is that when you got a mortgage with Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, right? If you went to Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase Bank, whoever, you got a mortgage on your house, the Federal Reserve was buying that mortgage, right? Well, they decided they're going to stop buying those mortgages. So what does that mean? Well, that's the reason why we start, started to see interest rates go up from three to four to five, right? Uh, they're, they're changing their appetite for uh, mortgages. And so then after that, on June 15th, just two weeks later, uh, Jerome Powell says the housing market needs to reset. Now, when the Federal Reserve, right, this is central banking, uh, they're in charge of all the money, right? By the way, there's an unrelated government entity, but they control all the money and they decide that, you know, that federal housing market needs to reset. What's going to happen? Well, we got a federal housing reset. So on that day, they decided to bump the federal rate 75 bips. What that means is right now for the banks to borrow money, it increased by 0.75%. And what we saw immediately the next day was interest rates increase by half a percent to three quarters of a percent for the end buyer. Right, so we started the year at about three percent, and right now we're about five and three quarters. This is a very significant amount, right? Going from three to six percent, a lot of people lost their purchasing power by about ten percent. So now we got this data, right? And this is, by the way, a few weeks ago. But when this happened, I'll share with you. I was a little anxious. I was a little uncertain. I'm one of the most confident people you ever meet. I was for a day, like, uh, what the heck is is going on here? And I need to plug into my community, right? And my community is Collective Genius. So we go out to Collective Genius and, uh, you know, we have Bruce Norris speak on stage. And Bruce Norris has predicted the real estate market successfully for the last 20 years. And he shared a lot of wisdom. And uh, the biggest thing was that of all the things that are going to affect housing prices, really the biggest thing that's going to affect it is if we ever have a foreclosure crisis, which we're nowhere near at the moment. So as long as we keep recession not terrible, we're not going to have this terrible uh, recession with as far as uh, people losing jobs, unable to pay their mortgages, causing foreclosures. And right now, even if we had a foreclosure, everyone's got equity. So like they can just sell it with a realtor. So what are we seeing right now with, uh, you know, Jerome Powell and the Fed? Sellers are starting to sell because they think we're at our peak, which is an understandable concern, right? So sellers that have houses that are more than one, by the way, not their primary home, people that have more than one house are starting to sell their home, right? We also have buyers freaking out because their purchasing power has dropped by 10%. And so what does that mean, right? If these buyers that have been well qualified are now taking the back seat, what's going to happen to demand? Well, I can tell you what's happening in the Phoenix market. The demand has dropped, but it's not dropped significantly enough uh, to affect our market, right? So we went from uh, a barometer, according to the Crawford report, of 95% of a normal demand. We went down to 89%. So a small, small drop, right? So... Um, I want to share with you guys real quick, and please ask your questions. I'm going to answer all your questions, guys, uh, in, a, in, a, in just a minute. Uh, but my biggest action I took from Collective Genius uh, is my friend Marcus Krigler. Uh, he's the one that you know, handles our financial planning and taxes and so on. Uh, he says, we got to get to a million dollars in the bank. Now, I don't have a million dollars in the bank, which I did, which I had at any point in my life. Never been there in my life. But he says to get a million dollars in the bank. And what that means is if we need to beg, borrow, and steal... Big borrow and steal, right? Like do what you got to do to get a million dollars in the bank because we don't know what's right around the corner. It's probably going to be fine, but we need to be in a position to weather the storm. So one of the things I want to do is start 
uh, actively finding ways to get a million dollars in the bank. So one of the pleasures, one of the benefits I have of, of being a podcast host and creating content is I actually get to see what everyone's interested in, right? I can see what's trending and so on. And here's what I've noticed. In the last 30 days, we've had 20,000 people watch my interview with Leon Johnson, right? The interview about creative finance and creative strategies, how to buy a house uh, with uh, um, sub two wraps, lease options, whatever. That is my number one trending episode for the last 30 days. So 20,000 of you guys in the last 30 days have came across my page to watch a video with Leon Johnson talking about creative financing. I've also seen right behind that, my, invest, my interview with Robert Wensley and Investor Lift. That tells me you guys are concerned about your buyer pool, right? Maybe you've been selling to hedge funds and well, maybe you can no longer sell the hedge funds. I think Amherst, Roofstock, and uh, Tybor and a few other ones have stopped buying. Now, will they start buying again? I absolutely believe they're going to start buying again, right? It could be three months away. It could be six months away. But at the end of the day, they have to buy it because they're in the business of buying houses. So, uh, but right now, that doesn't help you. So maybe you need to find some more buyers. So Investor Lift is my second most viewed in, uh, episode in the last 30 days. And my third most viewed episode is the one I did with Eric Brewer, my good friend Eric, right? Uh, he uh, came up with Novations, how to use Novations in real estate. We call it the Brewer Method. We partnered up to create the Brewer Method. And so that is our third most viewed episode, right? So creative financing, how to find new buyers, and how to uh, acquire a property and other methodologies besides just buying it cash. So I appreciate that, right? I mean, we got a bunch of people that are really smart uh, digesting the right content. And uh, just real quick, you know, I had a private conversation with Eric Brewer, I want to say two, three months ago, and we were talking about this moment. And he's like, you know, what are we going to do? Uh, and by the way, he is far... <laughs> Much, he's a much better operator. He's got a much better business than I do. Uh, but he was like, you know, like, what's, what are we going to do? I was like, well, Eric, um, if things change, uh, there's be, there have been people that have been prepping for this storm for the last two years. It's really easy. We stop selling to the people that are trying to buy right now, and we start selling to the people that have been prepping for the storm. So that's what we're going to do right now. So uh, what are we going to do as far as our team? Our acquisition strategies are going to change. So we've been doing cash first really cash only, right, uh, for our wholesaling team. That's what we've been doing for the last um, four years is cash options only, right? So what are we going to do? We're going to be offering novations more often. So we're going to offer cash first and then novations. But if novations doesn't work, whatever doesn't, if they can't turn it into a deal, they got to turn it in. And once they turn it in, I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to talk to the homeowner figure out why cash didn't work, why innovations didn't work. And at that point, we're going to start pitching creative offers. So that's option number three, right? So cash first, then innovations, then a creative offer, and finally, a realtor referral. So that's how we're going to modify our acquisition strategy uh, strategies. We basically need to come in with more than one option. We're going to come in with multiple options. Again, figure out what the situation the seller is in, what the ideal outcome looks for them, and then come in and offer cash, offer novations, um, creative offer, and finally, uh, a realtor referral. Now, that's probably not rocket or uh, a revelation for you guys, right? A lot of you guys may be doing that already. Uh, but what is definitely going to be changing is our disposition strategies. Here's the reality. Uh, our flippers that we've been selling to, our wholesalers and flippers that we've been selling to for the last two years, I mean, it's been really easy to sell. Like, our disposition guys didn't really have to work that hard to sell a property. I mean, our best disposition strategy is posting on Instagram, right? So it hasn't been that hard to sell the deal. But right now, flippers' appetites have changed. Uh, when they were usually, before, they were willing to pay 80, 85%, sometimes as high as 90%. Now they're saying they need to be a 65 to 70%. That's not going to work for us as a business. Uh, hard money lenders, they've changed their terms overnight. Again, totally understandable. I understand where the flippers are coming from. They got to price their risk because they can't pay what they were paying before. Of course, I get that. Hard money lenders, either their funding has dried up or you got to put more down or you got to pay more points or you got to pay a higher interest rate. So hard money lenders are becoming um, uh, not as great of a partner as they were before. And again, I totally understand where they're coming from. And one of the things our disposition team needs to start doing is create relationships with different hard money lenders, right? You find other people that we can partner and buyers with. Uh, we're going to start reaching out to realtors. Um, I think that uh, right now, uh, as flippers, 
And we don't really deal with many, as many buy and hold people in the Phoenix market, but uh, as our buyer pool or buyer appetite changes, we need to be more proactive. We're going to start reaching out to realtors. So uh, finding realtors that have sold homes nearby, right? Uh, finding the top realtors in the market, reaching out to them and offering them off-market properties. Now, here's the thing. A lot of realtors don't want to hear from investors like us. They really don't. And that's fine, right? We move on. We're going to find the realtors that want to work with us, that want to hustle, that want to uh, do more business, especially in a market that's slowing down. So uh, that's one thing we're going to be adding. The other thing is if a flipper needs to buy a property at 65% for it to make sense for them, they're not our buyers. So you guys have heard us talk about on our role plays, on our scripts, that if a seller says, I need you to pay this price, well, I'm not your seller, right? Uh, or I'm not your buyer. Well, here's the same thing here. If you need to buy this house at 65% for it to make sense for you, you're not our buyer. And I'm going to take those deals down myself. Why would I sell it to someone else at 65% and sit here while I'm really hustling really hard, right? Spending the money on marketing and so on. I try to sell this deal at 65%. For us to be able to sell a deal at 65% and make money, we need to be buying it at 55%, 60%. And I'm not saying it can't be done, but the deal volume, the number of deals we're going to do per month is going to change drastically, right? To the point where we might be out of business. So uh, for us, this is how we're going to pivot. We're going to start taking deal, uh, deals down ourselves. Now you might think, Steve, that's crazy. Why would you ever take deals down in a declining market? So I want to deal with this because there's a lot of information out there that as a real estate professional, I personally find very aggravating. There's a lot of bad information out there. There's a lot of people out there saying like we're, we're crashing, uh, markets can come to a stall. Now, am I going to sit here and tell you the market's not going to decline? I can't guarantee a market's not, uh, I cannot guarantee the market's not going to decline. But what I can guarantee is not going to decline 20% overnight, right? Something catastrophic would have to happen, right? I mean, we're talking like Putin's got to pull a nuke. Uh, in Europe for that to happen. So uh, at this exact point, I don't see the market going down 20%, especially since supply is still really low. Supply in the Phoenix market is 14,000. Now there's been a lot of hoopla been made around you know the country. It's like, man, Phoenix added 5,000 new listings last month. That's a 50% increase from 9,000 to 14,000. And they're not wrong. But here's the thing. I started the real estate business in 2007. When I was a realtor, when that was my only thing, there were 56,000 homes active for sale in MLS. This is not a big deal. A normal market is between 30 and 40,000 listings. We are still in a low supply uh, inventory market. And at the end of the day, there are still people moving here to Phoenix every single day. Uh, one of the great things about Arizona is that people are moving here. So until that changes, Arizona, I don't see it going down. Could it go down? It's possible. I just don't see it. So, um, again, Bruce Norris, he, he, he predicted every housing market up and down accurately for the last 20 years. I'm going to put my faith in him. I'm going to put faith in the data. I'm going to put faith in the put my faith in the Cronford report, who has accurately predicted the market for the last 20 years. And I'm going to ignore everyone that's freaking out. There's a lot of people freaking out and I get it, right? When we're unsafe or when we're unsure, freaking out is totally understandable. And the best way to stop freaking out is to become more knowledgeable, get more information, right? Talk to the experts. Um, I am incredibly blessed. I get to talk to on the phone to the number two title company, the owner of the number two title company in Arizona, the number one female loan officer in the country and the data provider for the Phoenix market who writes the conference report, which I you know, repeat every month. So I get to see what's actually happening. So I'm not freaking out because I have the data to explain the direction we're going to go. So uh, again, you know, they're, uh, the flippers need to be at 65%. God bless them. They're not our buyers anymore. We're going to start taking the deals down ourselves. Now I do have something embarrassing to admit. I have done a really lousy job of raising private money. I don't have access to a lot of private capital, you know? Um, I do have private capital and they've been uh, wonderful partners for me, but I don't have enough to start taking down more deals. So if you're listening to the show, if you like what we do and you want to work with us, reach out to us, send me an email, steve at disruptors.com and just put in the subject line, private money partner, and we can work together, right? 
I am gung ho on this market and I'm very confident in my team. I'm confident in our data. And, you know, because we're also licensed realtors, we can save a lot of money selling a property. So um, if you're interested in working with me and my team on our deals, send me an email, steve at disruptors.com and put in the subject line, private money partner. Um, let's partner on these deals together. And this is for people that are interested in real estate, but don't want to do the work themselves. And here's the other thing, right? If you're uncertain, if you're feeling unsure about how to navigate this market, my first thing I would recommend to you is finding a tribe. Again, I said earlier, my tribe, Collective Genius. I'm also friends with, you know, Pace Morby, Brent Daniels, Jamil Damji, all these awesome guys in town. So I've got my tribe. I got people that I can pick up the phone and ask them what's going on. So for you to navigate this market, to feel confident, I highly recommend you find a tribe. Now, I've started personally in 2007. I've seen a lot of what's happened. I've got to experience this once before. And truthfully, this might, you can't see it in my face, but I am beyond excited about this opportunity. I've got unbridled enthusiasm. In addition, I'm getting mentored by Eddie Speed. Right, He's seen multiple recessions. He has thrived in uncertain markets. And he and I are working together. Right, He's mentoring me on how to navigate this market as well. And you know, I partnered with Eric Brewer to do innovation. So if you have a tribe, perfect. If you don't have a tribe, find one. And if you don't have one, well, I personally want to help 10 people navigate this upcoming market recession, uncertainty, inflation, and so on. So if you're unsure about how to proceed, send me an email, steve at disruptors.com and put um, navigate the recession, right? Again, we're only looking to work with 10 people. If you're interested, send me an email again, steve at disruptors.com and you know, we'll see if it makes sense for us to work together. So uh, let's go ahead and jump to this questions here. All right, so the first question is on YouTube from Ahi, I assume. Hey, Steve, I'm finding it hard to lock wholesale deals lately. What's your advice? Well, again, this is the problem we're having at this exact moment. Um, people, the homeowners, we've got this Delta. Homeowners are either realistic or they're less than realistic and they're super optimistic, right? And we have buyers that are really pessimistic. And again, all understandable because there's a lot of uncertainty. But if you're dealing with a seller today, you've got to A, come up with more options, or B, market more to find the motivated seller. So um, if, oh, and by the way, we'll just take a step back real quick. What we're finding right now, there's two different types of sellers, right? We got the sellers that are totally realistic, and those you can be able to buy at a lower price. You know, Carlos on my team, he's locked up two in this past week where we're able to buy below 70% of market value, right? But those are, not as common, most of them want more, we want 75, 80, 85%. So in those instances, you could uh, offer them novations, you can offer them creative finance, um, or you're gonna have to market more. Uh, the other thing too is, you know, there's, there's uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's, um, you, may, you, you may need to brush up on your skills to, to, to market, you know, to lock up more contracts with homeowners. And you know what, I apologize. Um, so. I brought up this board over here. So we did, we did an event, Disruptors Blueprint, um, last month. And in that event, we covered um, a whole wide range of topics, right? So we talked about disqualifying leads. We talked about how to run your business from uh, lead gen to closing the deal. We talked about recruiting and managing, um, exit strategies, having multiple exit strategies when you're doing your deals, hiring VAs, how to deal with novations, um, reviewing your P&Ls, your finances, your balance sheets, uh, dealing with marketing, drip campaigns, compensation. How do you compensate the people on your team? Uh, time management. And man, I, I can share with you, when I first started in real estate, time management was a massive struggle. So we talked about time management, how to run your business effectively. I mean, I run multiple businesses, four or five businesses in parallel. Um, I share with you guys how I'm able to run multiple businesses uh, at a high level through time management. Um, KPIs, which KPIs to, to track, uh, how to do creative deals, how to raise private money. Um, talked about 
price, you know, how to overcome the price negotiations, how to talk to a homeowner when there's other third party members involved, right? Like if they got a sibling that's in a different state, if they got a spouse that can't make it, um, how to have an effective follow up process, how to demonstrate credibility before you go to the appointment. Um, talking about branding and talking about, you know, your accountability chart. So those were all things that we covered um, at our last event. That was two and a half days. But if you're struggling with any of that, again, we're looking for 10 people that we want to work with that want help navigating this market. And if you think those things will help you, again, send me an email, steve at disruptors.com. Um, so going back to the other questions, how do I talk to sellers? Um, you know, I, I, I hate, you know, to, to keep plugging my own product, but you know, we do have a sales training program. So if you go to disruptors.com slash sales disruptors or slash sales masterclass, we have a full blown curriculum. So, um, August, I want to say 17, 18th, we have a day and a half in my office to go over how to effectively, uh, talk to homeowners. Um, yeah, so some, someone said I did a deal a lot. Uh, did a deal in 2015, helped you a lot. Game connections, so that's awesome. Appreciate that. Uh, what was the Bruce guy's name? It was Bruce Norris, and this guy, man, like to accurately predict the market for the last 20 years. You think he's doing well for himself? Uh, so yeah, Bruce Norris. Is this Eddie Speed from Mississippi? No, this is Eddie Speed from Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. So I understand Mississippi. Uh, Mississippi, Leon Johnson is probably who you might be thinking of, uh, but Eddie Speed is in Texas and the guy's done 50,000 plus transactions. Do you think it's possible he can teach us a thing or two by navigating this upcoming market? Um, Julian, I'm from the Bay Area. Let's say house prices do significantly drop. What would be the best list to pull? What is the best list for you right now? So our best list right now is still authentic, A-U-D-A-N-T-I-C. Uh, we... Our, our highest margin per deal is from Audantic. Now, it, we don't get the most deals from Audantic, but the deals we get from it far exceed uh, everything else. Um, and then if prices do drop significantly, what's the best list to pull? Man, I mean, the people that have listed their homes for sale before expires and cancels, probably a good place to start, right? Because they had to sell. Um Beyond that, you know, it really, for your market, I can't say for sure. Um, you know, the code violations worked really well. High equity, uh, uh, out-of-state leads have worked really well. But for us personally, again, Audantic is the best. Uh, what is the best real estate school to sign up for? Any will do. This is going to sound terrible, but uh, most real estate schools are absolutely worthless. Um, I'm a licensed realtor, right? So that sounds crazy. Again, I got licensed in 2007. The real estate school you sign up for is not to help you prepare for real estate. Um, I literally learned only one thing that was useful for me uh, when I went through my 18 classes, right? 90 hours of real estate school. The only thing I learned was that inspection period was 10 days long. That's it, right? Uh, an acre is 43,560 square feet. That's it. I didn't learn anything in real estate school that was actually helpful for me as a realtor. But here's the funny thing. <laughs> the things I learned in real estate school have actually helped me become a better investor, right? Like we learn things like joint tenancy, um, you know, how to negotiate certain, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, there were just other real estate scenarios that, is, as you understand real estate from the, from the school, are actually applicable on how to do deals creatively. But it actually doesn't help you at all become a good realtor. Uh, where do we find buyers nationwide? Uh, Investor Lift is really the best way to go. So investorlift.com put the code disruptors to get 10% off. So um, please guys, like ask your questions. You know, uh, I don't normally do a lot of Q and A's, but it's important to me. You know, like right now, this is the time where a lot of people are struggling. I truly believe that by the end of this year, half of the wholesalers or more will be out of business. It's been a great ride, right? For the last couple of years. Uh, with COVID money, like we were getting free money from the government to stay home and you could do whatever you want with that money. There were no strings attached to it. There was, it was not a loan or anything like that. And with that, a lot of people were able to get into wholesaling, which is fantastic. But 
if you have never been in a market that's slowing down, if you've never been in a market where buyers and sellers are changing, I think um, you're in for an interesting ride. Not a bad ride. Because remember, I lost everything in 2007 through, through, through 2009, right? Like I shared a few times before. I mean, divorce was a word that was shared around the household, right? It was a bad, bad time. I literally lost everything. I was worth negative multiple six figures in that time. But I was able to make it, right? I was able to survive. And part of that was some of the mentors I had along the way. So um, you're in for a bumpy ride. It's not the end of the world, but if you have no one to support you, it could be really challenging. You know, there's gonna be times where uh, you are, are dealing with something and you just need someone to just kind of point you in the right direction. You'll save countless hours, days, weeks, maybe months, right? Uh, maybe you'll avoid you from making a, an expensive mistake. It could also be that you're really down on yourself and you need someone to pick you up. You want someone to kind of show you like, there is a way through this. There is a bright side, an accountability partner one way or another. And again, it doesn't have to be me. It can be anybody. It's just, I cut my teeth <laughs> through the first recession. So um, find someone that can support you along the way. Uh, Audantic, yes, A-U-D-A-N-T-I-C. I think Audantic.com is really just all you need to go. Um, how do you plan on finding the mom and pop buy and hold buyers? Uh, thank you, Chris. Really appreciate you. Um, I don't know if we can find the mom and pop buy and hold buyers uh, in any particular strategy. Um, again, my strategy, uh, because the flippers' appetites have changed so much, is I'm going to take the deals down myself. Right? I'm going to get a private money loan, uh, and I'll close on it myself and listen to MLS. Right? Like, why should I subject myself uh, to someone else who's making fear-based decisions? or maybe not fear-based, but less risk-adverse decisions, and they, they can't stomach the appetite of this market, I'm not going to subject my team, my business, my livelihood to all of that. I'm going to go after it myself. Um, you know, you guys might have seen me post this on uh, Facebook and Instagram a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, I think, right when <laughs> Jerome Powell made those announcements. There's a book written by Gary Keller, the guy that owns Keller Williams. He wrote a book called Shift. And in the book Shift, he talks about Times, uh, wealth is made when the market shifts. When it's a steady seller's market and it's a steady buyer's market, the market's the market, right? If you're great, you're gonna keep doing great. If you're awful, well, you're gonna be awful, right? But in the shift, this is when the tides change. This is when you have the opportunity to create wealth. And again, I am beyond ecstatic for the opportunity and maybe you know the 10 people that decide to work with us. Uh, Real Jake Arnold jumped in wholesaling houses, uh, wholesaling full time. That's awesome! Congratulations. Um, you know, if you don't have a, a, a partner or someone, not a business partner, but someone to work with, someone to squat up with, I highly recommend you do that. Uh, what's your way of pitching novations to a seller? So, Eric Brewer is a genius at this. He is the best. Um, and if you guys decide to partner up with me, like I said, ten people, we're going to include the novations training within it. But at a very quick level. I would say, hey, you know, the kind of the price you're looking for, that's not a price I can pay. But tell you what, if you can give me a little bit of time, you can give me a little bit of access, um, I may be able to get you that that figure. So if I can get you that figure, will you be okay granting me a little bit of time, a little bit of access? At a very high level, that's what pitching innovations is. And the the pitch innovations is not the hard part, right? It's not easy, but that's not the hard part. The challenging part of Novations is navigating the title company, navigating attorneys, navigating the other realtor, right? Navigating the payoff. So if you guys are interested in that, you can go to brewermethod.com, buy us directly uh, from uh, Eric and myself. Or if you're looking to someone, again, to help you navigate this market in the next uh, six to 12 months, uh, send me an email, Steve at Disruptors. And then if you decide to work with us, we'll include uh, the Brewer Method uh, Novations uh, course in there as well. So, um, you guys have any other questions? I'm happy to answer it. Um, you know, uh, I, this was not intended to be a pitch fest. It may come across as a pitch fest. Um, you know, times are interesting. Uh, the, the market is shifting. Uh, do we know exactly where the market's going to go? We don't. But what do we know? We know what, what, what the data is today. We know what the data is this morning. 
Uh, we know that uh, people need a place to live. So until people are losing their jobs because of the recession, I personally believe that the market will, at a bare minimum, stay even and keep par with inflation. So I don't see any other questions here. I hope this was valuable for you guys. Uh, if it was valuable, please, please share this with other people. You know, um, I want other people to get the benefit, uh, to, to maybe learn some of the lessons I learned along the way. Um, you know, don't have to go through the hardship that I went through. You know, like I said, losing everything, uh, talking about, um, you know, divorce, like that was a terrible, terrible time. Um, so where do I see acquisition business in the next five to 10 years? You know, uh, Austin, that's a very interesting question. Um, I don't think uh, wholesaling personally is going to be here in five to seven, five to 10 years. Uh, I think that wholesaling is probably going to be illegal in the next five to 10 years. Uh, not because I believe that's the right thing. I just think there's just too many regulations along the way. Um, you know, I think there are too many things coming down the pike. There are people that are doing wholesaling in, um, in a less than transparent manner. So I think there's going to be some challenges. So I personally believe that uh, wholesaling may be illegal in five years. But it's not the end of the world. Because you know what can never you know what can never be illegal? Flipping. Being a realtor, right? Offering other options, um, novations. So if you can progress and evolve with the market, you're gonna be okay. But if you're only gonna wholesale and that's your only strategy, you might have a hard time uh tomorrow in the next um few years. And then, um, what book have you recommended the most? Um, you know what might be a timely book right now? I would say probably Shift, like I said earlier, by, uh, by Gary Keller. Um, the Road Less Stupid by Keith Cunningham has been one of my favorite books. And then we just had Larry Yatch on the show a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and he was at How Leadership Actually Works. And man, like that guy has impacted my business so much. The business principles, I'm sorry, not business, the leadership principles we learned in that book have been monumental. So much, in fact, that not only is he coaching my leadership team, uh, we're also specifically coaching our right hand integrator. We have a coach for our wholesaling company and we have a coach for our media company. Like, <laughs> we got a whole bunch of like SEAL level people coaching my entire organization. So, how leadership actually works, start there, read that book. I think it'll blow your mind. Uh, what is my superpower? Um, I always figure it out. Um, we'll always make it through. Uh, I say that no matter what kind of adversity I face, we're going to conquer it. We're going to crush it. And that, the reason why is because we always figure it out. It might not be the most elegant solution. It may not be the most attractive solution. But we're going to figure it out. And we're going to dominate. Uh, how are you leveraging the fear in the marketplace in your acquisition process? You know, fantastic question, Chris. So if I'm talking to a homeowner, I'm not going to tell them, hey, like we got all this inflation and we got this recession, this and that. That is something that we would, a, a younger version of me would have been like, hey, like this is why you need to take the low price uh, because market's going down. Buyers are freaking out. Interest rates are going up. Like, prices can go down, right? And we, we would just vomit all this information on the homeowner. And as a result, they would ignore us because we're salespeople. So now I would say, hey, Chris, you know, like with the interest rates going up, you know, the, a lot of uh, mortgages going from 5% or 3% to 6%, you know, from beginning of this year to this year, right? So knowing that a lot of buyers' purchasing power has dropped by 10%, how do you think that's going to affect the market? And all we're doing was asking leading questions, letting them fill that void, having them explain to us that buyers being unable to buy right now will bring the prices down. Now it's their data. And now that it's their data, they're going to understand why we need to pay less, right? So if I were to insert doubt, I would just lead with the facts and ask them how, what, what they think about it and how they feel about it. So those are the two things I would do if we're going to uh, uh, try to get those questions. 
Um, and Melanie Sanders, thank you so much, Melanie. You're awesome. Uh, Melanie is a good, good friend of mine. I met her through Craig Proctor Coaching. Um, and uh, man, she's another monster. So uh, thank you so much, Melanie. It means a lot to me. Uh, Julian on YouTube, I also have a hard time finding good data. What's your top three companies for pulling lists? So we work with, for data, we work with three companies, uh, four companies, right? I mentioned Audantic, man, five companies now. Uh, Audantic, Investor Machine, uh, 8020 REI, Batch Leads, and uh, Investor Lift. Those are our five companies. Investor Lift is for buyers, but the list that we pull, right? So, and again, you know, if you guys want to understand all the data that we pull, how we pull the data, process, and, and so on, right? We are looking for 10 people who are interested in working with us to navigate this crazy market that we're about to enter into. Uh, how are you liking real thus far? I'm liking real, but for different reasons than you might enjoy or you might imagine. Uh, I don't have to deal with broker stuff anymore. So I love real. <laughs> they did for me exactly what I needed. So I was able to cut down my expenses, um, keep my revenue, reduce my overhead. It's fantastic. Uh, Austin says massive value in this life. Uh, thank you so much, Austin. I do appreciate that. Uh, you know, like I said, I was not supposed to record today, but there's so much interesting things going on and it, it sounds crazy, but I really do want to see everyone here win. I know it's impossible for everyone to win, but I really want my tribe to win. So I want to give as much value as possible, help you guys as much as possible. Uh, IG, help me dispo a deal in Greensboro, North Carolina, seeing that you have investor lift. So the best way, I apologize, uh, for uh, dispoing a deal is you got to send an email to deal at maxcashoffers.com. Bino is our dispo guy. He can help you disposition a deal in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, and then I forgot, we do have a couple of things for you guys. We do have tools, a list of tools that we use. Uh, so we created this uh, not that long ago, disruptors.com slash tools. Literally has an access or a link to every program we use, every tool we use to run our companies. Uh, we also have the assessment on disruptors.com. If you have not taken the assessment on our website, I highly encourage you to go to disruptors.com, take the assessment, It'll tell you what phase you are in your career and what tools may be helpful for you uh, for this uh, season in your career. Uh, Julian, for someone who has been su successfully wholesaling for the last year, what's your advice and how should I adapt? Find a tribe, right? That's what I was saying earlier. Find a tribe. It doesn't have to be me. It could be any tribe. Um, you know, if you want to be one of the 10 with us, great. We'd love to have you. But if not us, find a tribe, find, a, you know, uh, Pace right? and J Jamil and Brent, they're always saying squad up. Find a community that you can uh, work with, collaborate with, bounce ideas off of. You know, again, uh, I have a couple of tribes, right? I got the Collective Genius Tribe. I've got the Phoenix Tribe. And I also have my accountability partner who I have to meet with uh, once a week. I'm sorry, once a month. And that guy, you know, he's trying to sell his company for $80 million. So, like, that's a pretty good accountability partner. So, find someone that you can network with, communicate with, bounce ideas off of. Uh, and also offer emotional support. What's my email again? Steve at disruptors.com. D-I-S-R-U-P-T-O-R-S. Steve at disruptors.com. So um, let me just share a couple of things before we wrap up here. Uh, again, guys, if you found this valuable, tag a friend. Let them know about this. Share this episode. Comment below. Like the more we can get this information out there to the masses, the more people we can help. Again, hopefully at least minimize the damage in this upcoming market. Um, we do have part in the disruption tomorrow. So we got myself, Eric Brewer, um, RJ Bates, Chris, uh, Chris Jefferson, and uh, basically rag on each other for an hour, but it's a good show and we're gonna be debating, I think, interesting topics. And we have a bonus episode this coming Friday. I shared with you guys, I am friends with the number one female loan officer in the country, Lizzie Hofer. She's going to be here on Friday at 3 Pacific, 6 o'clock Eastern. And Tina Tambor, she writes these Crawford reports, right? Like, I get to read these. I get to give, get credit for this. But she's the one that actually comes up with all of this. So she's going to be there as well. So we're going to have the number one data scientist for real estate and the number one female loan officer in the country. And we'll be talking about what's going on in the market. And then again, 
Steve at disruptors.com. If you want to work with us, if you want to attend, send me an email. Uh, and then we do have our uh, all day sales training next month uh, in August. Go to disruptors.com slash sales disruptors. Check that out. If it makes sense for you, if you're having a hard time navigating um, the, the, the sales conversations, if you're, if you're w missing any deals, if you've ever seen a deal come across your email that you met with the homeowner, if you ever got, I need to think about it, I need to sleep on it, I need to pray on it. If you're ever getting this and you're walking out of the house without a contract, you can't afford to not come, right? For us, for what we're doing for $3,000, I promise you, you're losing a lot more than $3,000. If you've never been, I would say you're costing yourself a lot of money. So uh, before we wrap up, again, I just want to share with you guys, I'm hoping that, you know, the information I shared here was helpful, right? I'm changing my business or modifying multiple things to conquer this upcoming market. Taking the lessons I learned from the last recession when I got my teeth kicked in from 2007 to 2011, taking the lessons from other geniuses that have gone through multiple recessions, right? I mean, I got my tribe again at Collective Genius. I got my tribe in Phoenix, and I'm getting mentored by Eddie Speed. So um, if you want, or if this information for you was helpful, you know, please share it because I really do want to minimize the damage that's going to affect our industry, um, your business, like you and your business first and foremost, because you're not being taken care of. You can't take care of anybody else, right? If you're trying to create a legacy, if you're trying to quit your job, if you're trying to um, make it, you know, to prove somebody wrong, you know, that might sound crazy, but that was my, that was my deal. I want to prove everyone wrong. Whatever's going on, if you can't protect yourself, if you can't protect yourself, your family, it's going to be really tough, right? So I hope this was helpful for you. And if, you, if it was helpful for you, please, the cost here was to just share this with somebody else. And then I will see you guys tomorrow for Part of the Disruption and Friday for a special episode for our market update. I'll see you guys later. Shout out to Steve Train. Jump on the Steve Train. We real estate disruptors.